Jenna Caldwell, as you know, his tragic story of his brother losing Christian two years ago, back in 2022. But Gianno has devoted his life not only to finding the people behind that, but also trying to help other people from ever having to deal with that. He'll be testifying that Ways and Means Work and Welfare Subcommittee field hearing in Chicago on this very issue. Uh, it's going to take up the issue of dignity of work and how that can avoid some of the same problems that the devil, not only Chicago, but a host of other cities across the country. Gianna, very good having you. What do you make of this? Thank the crime situation me. not getting better. If anything, it's getting worse. You know, Neil, it really upsets me every time I hear the sound uh, from A.G. Garland saying, oh, the Biden administration policies are reducing crime across the country. We know that that is an absolute lie, an absolute lie from the attorney general. And as someone who's had to deal with this issue, it'll be almost two years since my brother was murdered, June 24th, 2022. And have it known that in the city of Chicago, just in March, there was a 28 percent increase in homicides tying almost, what, number two for the most homicides in any given month over the last decade. When you look at the fact... Wow. I didn't know Chicago had the most homicides in any month in the last decade in March, man. That's crazy. That's a, um, that's a huge story that's not being reported on. They had the most homicides... The most homicidal month in Chicago was last month in a decade. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. I, I can't even lie, man. I can't even lie, man. I didn't know that. Wow. I did not know that, man. I can I can tell you that I did not know that. We gonna get to Dawn Staley in a little bit, y'all. We gonna get to Dawn Staley in a little bit. I go just in March, there was a twenty eight percent increase in homicides, tying almost what number two for the most homicides in any given month over the last decade. When you look at the fact that uh, arrests have declined by thirty three percent. Since 2013. Shit. What? When you look at the fact that uh, arrests have declined by 33% since 2013. When you think. Yikes. We can't arrest our way out of this situation. We can't arrest our way out of this situation. Almost, what, number two for the most homicides in any given month over the last decade. When you look at the fact that uh, arrests have declined by 33 percent since 2013. When you think about the fact that just last month, in March, there was 190 people shot. This is insanity on steroids. <laughs> There's no other way to look at it. And the fact that people like my brother, innocent kids who are being murdered throughout the city of Chicago every year, and they're coming up doing an election year to say, hey, we're doing something about it. When the Biden administration said, there's no crime crisis in America. There's nothing going on. There's nothing to see here. Now, when they see the polling showing that, hey, this can have an impact on your reelection, all of a sudden they become interested in this issue. People like my family and other victims across the country are upset with the inaction that we've seen from the administration and our local. Well, here's the thing, though, man. For the record, man, shout out to God Ninja, man. God Ninja in the building. For the record, man, I will say this for the record. There are no solutions. <laughs> there are no solutions. Biden can't fix this. 
No one can fix this. I'll say that. I'll give Biden that. I mean, he could fix it if he go back to the old Biden. If he go back to 1990s Biden, he could fix it. But he ain't about to do that. This Joe Biden will fix it. This bill is not the answer to the crime problem. This is to bring some relief, immediate relief, to people under siege in America. So I want to make it clear to those editorial writers and to those people in my state and other states that Biden isn't more police and more bricks and more mortars and more boot camps and more drug courts and all that. Isn't that just ignoring the problem? The answer is it is dealing with a symptom. An important symptom and must be dealt with because we must take back our neighborhoods. Uh, somewhere on the order of 70% of one population group in America will have children born out of wedlock. And another population group in America, it's like 40%. And the largest population group in America, racial group in America, something like 25%. The reason why these folks are convicted felons ain't because they have high IQs. They're stupid. <laughs> we need this Biden back, man. We need this Biden back, man. Come on, Biden, man. Go back to your old self, man. Because we must take back our neighborhoods. Uh, somewhere on the order of 70% of one population group in America will have children born out of wedlock and another population group in America. It's like 40% and the largest population group in America, racial group in America, something like 25%. The reason why these folks are convicted felons ain't because they have high IQs. They're stupid. Most of them, they're not only predators, they're stupid. The real smart ones don't get caught. We don't know how to rehabilitate. We have no idea how to rehabilitate. A noble urging instinct on our part. But the truth is, when a criminal is rehabilitated, we don't know whether to, it's real or not or to recognize it. And secondly, if we're convinced it's real, we don't know why he got rehabilitated. He literally, and I'm not being facetious, he may have seen God. He may have come to religion. He may have... Uh, decided that his son or daughter's future was hanging in the balance. He may, whatever. We didn't know why it happened. It may be because of the program he went through in the prison system. But we had no notion why. And so we used to have indeterminate sentences. We used to say that we would allow a parole board to decide when or when or when, or when not someone was rehabilitated. So they'd march after a certain period of time before a parole board. Usually the good actors or actresses got parole and the ones that weren't so good didn't get parole. So the law we wrote says, hey, if you got sentenced and convicted, the federal judge has to give you 11 year sentence. He or she can't say, well, I kind of like I understand that your background was such that your mother may have not loved you when you were seven and your father left you when you were one. And by the way, when you got to school, you sat next to someone who was antisocial and that rubbed off on you. And therefore, we realize you had a tough year. Can't do that. They go to jail for 11 years flat. He said, what this is going to do, Joe, it's going to fill up more prisons now that judges can't put people on probation. And he was right. So I, along with others, introduced legislation to spend more money to build federal prisons. <laughs> Shout out to Joe, man. We must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social, uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask. What made them do this? 
They must be taken off the street. That's number one. There's a consensus on that. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized. They literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. Well, Joe, it's been 15 years would have been, what, 2009? <laughs> it's 2024, man. It's 30 years later, man. We got, we got goddamn hyper predators, man. <laughs> we got teens, man. Charles Lance says teens stand for these emotional, egotistical N-words. They are emotional and they are egotistical. That's true. Very egotistical. That society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people beyond the pale, and it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's the sad truth. I'm the guy that said rehabilitation, when it occurs, we don't understand it and notice it. And when we, even when we notice it and we know it occurs, we don't know why. So you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release. That's why in our system, there's the federal system, you Man, Joe was based, man. He knew you can't rehabilitate the Negro, man. Joe knew that. Joe knew. Joe said you cannot rehabilitate the Negro. He can't be rehabilitated. He can only get old, man. All he can do is get old, man, and then he changed because he's older now. <laughs> Your time. It's a shame, but we don't know how to rebuild. But there is a consensus, and I will cease. A, we must make the streets safer. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. I don't care why someone is antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change the behavior. That's what we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it, but they are in jail. Away from my mother, your husband, our families. But we would be being, we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist and we must deal with that man joe you was amazing man you were you were one of a kind joe